Hey there, Latiana. Um, looks like you got a scissor lift here, and looks like you want this to go into this, um, and then drive the part up and down. So right now, it looks like we have no degrees of freedom on much of anything. Um, if you actually look at the uh, plus sign here, it shows that we have a couple of things that are messed up. So let's go ahead and look at editing the sketch. So when we get into here, it looks like it's this gray piece and it's this hole right there. So if we're going to go into here, let's uh, actually open up this part and check it out. So on the top, um, you see that it has this little eye. If it ever has that, make sure you take care of it. Otherwise, you're going to come with some issues. Um, so if we come into it, it's not on center, and it's definitely not uh, angled to so if you were to actually cut this straight through, um, the thread would be off-center. Um, I don't really know what situation you'd want that to be off-center. So um, what we're going to do is delete the reference of wherever it is. Um, I'm going to lock in the distance here and project the geometry of the center of the hole. And then we can make it to the center. And it looks like you have it at 5 eighths. So uh, just align that a little bit easier. And then that way that the hole will be in the center. So if you actually drill it um, in real life, um, that'll be helpful. So close this out. Come back through and refresh. So once we update that, um, looks like we still have a plus. So it looks like there's an inconsistent relationship. So let's check it out. And it is this right here. So I'm not sure why uh, that's not working for you. Um, I think it's because this one's grounded. So if we unground it, it kicks back out. Um, I don't know why it's grounded. So anyway, um, I think you're thinking something else is going on, but we'll get to that. So if we come back now, the whole thing kind of moved around all squirrely. The issue I think that we're having here is that uh, this bottom frame, we're grounded here. So let's unground that. So if we ground and root it, it actually flips it over to the origin. So this is going to be the front. Okay. So, and then this thing flipped over as well. The reason we want to do that is now, if you actually look at the origin plane, it is now in the middle of your part. And same thing with the other origin plane. So it looks like you did have those set up right, um, going through the center of the part, which is good. Because now we can orient this part to the center line of this part. So um, let's go to the top. Find it in the browser. Here we are. So we have a mate on the side here, and then rotational translational constraint and then a tangent constraint. I'm just going to delete all this stuff, and I'm going to show you why. I'm going to rotate this back. constrain the center line to this center line. Oh man, you got all sorts of crazy stuff going on. Okay, so instead we're just going to do it like this. Yeah, this one is flexible. Uh, we don't need that right now. And delete this. So this should be the only part that's stuck to the bottom. This one should be able to move. And there we 
we go. So this part and this part. So first thing I look at is this part here. I'm going to do an assemble. Instead of doing constrain, we're going to do an assemble. And what that does is from right here to right there. So if we select this part first, and then the edge there, I think that's what you're going for. And then again, edge here to the edge there. So that way you have your little roller and it sticks through. Same thing up here. So we're going to set the easiest ones first that we know and then get those out of the way. Now, if this part is always going to be in the middle of this part, we can constrain the center line to the center line. And it'll just jump right into place. So that way we know it'll always be in the middle. So that way, if we constrain just the center loop here to the center loop here, we know that it's always going to stay in the middle. And we don't have to do any like locational constraints. So if you're worried about the gap between here, as long as you had it uh, set up correctly, then your gap is going to be the same here as it is over here. So I know that uh, your center line is not on the center line. So if we look at here, do a plane from this to here, and that's where it should be. And it looks like it is. So that leads me to believe that these are not right. So let's check them out. Measurement from here to there is 1.488. From here to here is 1.508. So these things are not constrained equally um, along the part. So that's pretty much where your where your error is. I mean, you, if you look at the top here, you can see. Um, so let's find this one. Let's turn the edge to the edge, and then where's this one? This is here, 1.13 and 1. 1. 1.113, 1.13. So I'm guessing since this one is a So now if we look at our part, this goes up and down, this goes everywhere. So if we constrain center line here, center line here, and we have those constrained. Now if we know that this part has a center line somewhere, is the origin, hopefully that's in the middle. We can strain that one to here. I don't think it matters, but so now if we constrain circular reference into the middle, it's always going to be in the middle. So you set up a whole bunch of rotational constraints, um, which is fine, but I think you're doing a little bit too much work. Let's turn the center to the center again. Center to the center. And it looks like something's off.
So if we go to the center to there. Okay. So now this is where you want to have this be translational on the outside to the bottom. Now instead of doing it all, you only have to do it once. So now our part goes up and down. Now if you wanted to have this part uh, stay in there and actually come up and down, um, you'll have to set it up a little bit differently because this is all one part. Um, I believe you had it as a flexible constraint maybe. Um, you can maybe get away with that, but uh, that's just kind of a setup issue. So then if we constrain translational, well, let's get this thing centered. Okay, and constrain translation. Oh, looks like that one's going the other way. So I hope that gets you going, but uh, the main reason was that uh, this little thing here was at 0.113 instead of 0.13. Um, so let's see if we have any interference. We do, and we do. So this part needs to be, maybe it does need to be a 0.13. So that's pretty much what you're looking for. And the other one is here. Okay. So now you have a little bit of gap there. And there's just a little bit of gap there. So if we go to manage and rebuild all, that should get you going. And then turn off all our work features. So if we then constrain from this edge, that edge, and we call this one lift. Ooh. Hmm. Are these things even alive? So there's another issue for you. Um, with your setup, they are not uh, going to stay aligned. So in your setup, uh, you might have to rethink that because I don't believe that uh, these things are flush to each other. They're off by about 0.13 degrees. So um, maybe uh, go back through and look at your uh, setup there and see what's going on.